Amen. Amen, everybody. We Amen. just thank God and thank God for you and thank everybody for tuning in tonight and thank God for the people that are here tonight for an impersonal Bible study tonight. We pray that all is well with you tonight and all everything that you have been trying to do turned out okay today. We just bless God and pray to God for all of our sick and shut in. We ask that you continue to lift up in prayer. Brother McCauley just got off the line with him. He's still in some of some pain, but he said he's, he's, he's moving through it. He just trusted yeah. God to get him through it. Not only that, but we're lifting up Brother Donnie, yes, uh, sir. Baker's family. We uh -huh. continue to lift them up in prayer. Janelle and others that are, you know, sick and shut in. Sister Wade as well. Yeah. Uh, we've been having a, a busy week, and we God has just been moving in a mighty, mighty way. I want to thank uh, Reverend uh, James Smith and Reverend James Thompson for filling in for my brother, filling yes, in for me. Yes, Amen. Did an uh, outstanding job on their teaching segment and as well. So tonight we just pray that you just come along as we study God's word to see what God has to say with us tonight. Our lesson tonight is going to come out of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Amen, amen. Those that are viewing us by Facebook, we want to invite you to come and be a part of our Father Day celebration this coming Sunday as we honor and celebrate our fathers for all the work that they have done. We want to recognize them. Don't want to forget about them as well. Yeah. We also, on the fourth Sunday of this month, we'll be celebrating Men's Day. Amen. We, we have uh, William Nelson is going to be our keynote speaker for that 11 o'clock uh, morning service. So we, we invite you to come. We located right here at the Washington Hill Community, 5611 of Charlotte Drive. Our Sunday morning, uh, Sunday school starts at 9.30 and service starts at 10.30. We surely welcome to come. We'd love to see you. We'd love to, for you to be a part of this great uh, worship service that we're going to be having. Uh, if you have your Bible, you notice what it says. Start at the beginning of verse 1. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Whereby, whereby, are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse 10 in your final reading. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you should never fall. Amen. 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 We're going to teach on the subject, adding to your faith, adding to your faith. Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, and we are certainly glad and thankful that you allowed us to wake up again this morning. Not only wake us up, but you clothe us in our right mind. We give you all glory and all honor today, for you have been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Amen. It's so many going around with their own knowledge, Lord God, thinking they know it all and right. they're trying to get to heaven on, on their own might and their own will. Well, we pray for this unbelieving world, 
We pray for those who are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. If they continue to plant seed and invite those to be a part of our Christian faith. We lift up Brother McCullough today, yeah. still having pain in his legs, yeah. and doctors have not figured out why he's having this problem with his blood. And Master, we lift up Sister Wade today, who yeah. have breathing yeah. problems. We pray that you would strengthen her lungs, Lord yeah. God, strengthen yeah. her body, Lord God, that she can continue to consume more food, that she can gather yes, more sir. strength. Yeah. We, we lift up Brother Donnie today, yes, who's, yes. whose appointment is so far off, Lord yes, God. He's, he's at home sometimes in pain. He can't move like he want to move, and yes. we certainly miss him right here at First Baptist of Washington Hill. We pray, oh God, that the, the appointment time that they have would, would be on point. Yeah. The doctors yeah. can do what they need to do for him yeah. so that he can continue to be healing. Well, for Father, if you, if you desire to heal him spiritually, we ask that you would do that in the mighty yeah. name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It's so many, Lord God, who's on their beds of afflictions today that need you today. Yeah. Our world and our world needs you in a mighty, mighty way. The politicians are so divided in what they need to do for the people who yeah. voted for them and put them and all of them fighting against one another. Yeah. And yeah. Master, we know that our dependency, our help comes from you today. Yeah. We're totally depending on you to move in a mighty way. Thank you for feeding us. Thank you for clothing us. Thank you for the shelter you have provided for us. Lord, we just give you glory today. Lord, I pray, oh God, oh God I pray today that you, your anointing will fall fresh on us. Lord, God, help us to teach this word. Lord, God, open the ears and the heart to receive your word that we may continue to grow in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Our lesson tonight is adding to your faith. Adding to your faith. Amen. <coughs> amen. And, and what, I, what I'm saying is as, how, as we grow as believers, amen, we need to continue to add to our faith. We just don't be on a standstill. Yeah. We've been called into the, the, the glorious salvation of Jesus Christ, and we have to grow. Amen. And amen. Peter has said God has given every believer the potential, the potentials to live a life of godliness because we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Now, I don't know you grab hold to that, but every morning that we get up, we, we trust God to bring us through another day. Amen. amen, because we walk by faith and not by sight. God will use trials. Yeah. Hear me now. God will use trials and things that disrupt our lives to grow us into being wise, strong, so that we can utilize our faith to the highest potential. Mm -hmm. I think I need to say that again because you're probably missing it. All right, amen? He'll use trials. Amen. Things to disrupt our lives yeah. to help us to grow into being more wise, strong, so that we can utilize our faith to the highest potential. Yeah. Amen. And we say, some people tell me, say, Pastor, how can I uh, increase my faith? Well, you got to understand, he's going to put you through some things so that your faith can grow. Yeah. All right. As babes, when we began to crawl, we started to walk. Not only after we started to walk, we began to run. Amen. So these trials are coming not to destroy us, but to help us to grow. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's look at the text and look at the scriptures. Notice what Peter is saying. Because Peter, here in the text, he's revealing knowledge to the Christian that is scattered. Because of their belief in Jesus. And despite all the persecution that these believers are going through and they, they are facing, even when Paul, Peter was writing his letter, they still have to live the kind of life that is pleasing to God. Yeah. Amen. Regardless of what you're going through, you still gonna have to live a life that is pleasing to God. Amen. Amen. So he tells them, so Peter identifies with them. He says in verse 1, as he identifies them, he says to them, he said, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, 
to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, he specifically speaking to those who are believers, right? Now, not unbelievers, because he said those who have, have received the, the same precious, right? The same precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So his, his letter is directed to those believers who are being scattered because they've been persecuted by unbelievers. They've been persecuted by Rome, who's doing away with all Christianity, trying to move Christianity out of the way, and they're trying to do their own thing. And so he frightened this letter them to build up their faith. Amen? Amen. 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 He, he, he wants them to understand that while they are waiting on the return of Christ Jesus, they still have to grow. Amen. And that's important for us to understand that because Jesus has not returned, we still got to grow. Amen. He's looking for us to grow. We got to grow in grace. Not only grow in grace, but we got to grow in the knowledge of God. And this is what we're lacking in Christendom. We, we have a lot of folks who are part of the local church, but they're not growing. Right? We have a lot of folks that who are part of the local church, they don't have the knowledge. Because they don't put themselves in the position where they can learn God's word. So, so Simon Peter also wants the believers to know that he's committed to spreading the good news of the kingdom of heaven by identifying himself as a bond servant. As, as a bond servant, he's, he's a slave. He's a, a, he's a bond servant as a slave. He's committed to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Not only is he, he committed to spreading the good news of Jesus Christ, but he says, my position as an apostle. And I was, I was chosen by Jesus Christ to be an apostle. So here is he, he's trying to identify with them, let them know that he's not, not higher than them. Right? But he just, what he let them know, I understand what you're going through. Sometimes we can, we can uh, uh, cause people to move away from it because we begin to tell them who we are, our position in church. And so we, we want to use that as a way to try to share the good news. But sometimes you just need to start up a conversation with them. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> just, a, just a regular common conversation with them. Just ask them how they're doing. And they share with you that the, the day is not going according to what they are planning, then that's, that's a door opening for you to share the good news of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter, he, he also confirmed that his position do not put him above them, but equally identifies with them. Amen. Because as believers, they have obtained the same precious faith through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, God don't look at me no different than He looks at all of you. Yeah. We, we all have to we all have to believe, trust, and grow. Right? It, it, some of us, when we work, we, we we have different. We've been appointed to different jobs within the church, Amen. And we we strive to do those jobs the best of our ability. The the reward when we get to heaven might be a little bit different, but it don't look at us any different. Even when we fall down and have try to get back up, sin is still sin. Right? And that's one of the things we try to make different in this world that we live in today. We try to look at somebody else's sin as different than what the sin that we've committed, but when God looks at it, it's still the same. Yeah. Right? According to the Bible, the, the wages of sin is death. Yeah, it is. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wages of sin is death. Yeah. But the gift of God is Woo. eternal life through Jesus Christ. The gift. So he looked the gift. He still looked at sin the same way. We we in Second Peter chapter one verses one to yeah. ten. We we teaching on the subject of adding to our faith tonight. Real. Okay. That's good. Notice what he says now. But Peter, uh, Peter salutation in verse two opens up with a prayer. And a plea that grace and peace be multiplied unto them through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. 
Do you see that? He said, verse 2. It's on the board. Grace and peace be multiplied. Multiplied. This is, this is, you can't see it? You have 2 Peter? It's the second verse. Second verse here. Where were you at? <laughs> you intimidated. You did. Okay, all right. All right. We'll wait on it. We we'll wait on it. Any questions thus far? He has Peter has an aim here. And his aim is to is to help them to continue to grow. Even under uh, persecution. And one of the things is, is probably hard when you're going through things to, to take it, you know, take it and keep on moving. You, yeah. you have to be like a Timex. <clears throat> right, right. And keep, and keep on, on ticking. ticking. You see what I'm saying? And, and this is what we strive to do. In, in the second version, in the second verse, he's, this is his salutation, his greeting. The word salutation means that he's, he's actually greeting them. And his prayer and the plea is that the grace and peace be multiplied unto to them through the knowledge of God. Through the knowledge of God. You see. The more, the more knowledge you have of God, the more grace and the more peace you obtain Amen. from the Lord. Amen. You, you see. And, and of Jesus Christ the Lord. Right. So you have both of them. They have, you, you have both the knowledge of God, peace and grace. Of God, and then you also have the Son, Jesus, our Lord. That shows up in this second verse. Amen. <clears throat> right? Revelation knowledge separate a lot of believers. Revelation knowledge separate a, a lot of believers from having more grace and peace. <clears throat> and, and, and not only does it separate them from having more grace and peace, because when they go into adverse situations, because they don't have a lot of knowledge that the Lord said, I'm with you, even through the end of the world, I'm with you. Because they don't have the knowledge and the belief system to believe that what he said, I'm gonna, never going to leave you, I'm never going to ever forsake you, they go through adverse situations feeling as if they're all by themselves. You never, a believer is never by themselves as they go through problems. Amen. They are never by themselves. The problem they have in Christendom, Christendom, I'm, I'm just another word for people that's in the church, is that they try to handle adverse situations by themselves. Right. right? They don't even, when they pray, they don't put their problem, they don't put their problem, present their problem to God, right? They just pray. And they should give God their problem. He said, cast all your problems, all your cares, all your problems upon me. Yeah. Right? And so, but, they, but the believers don't do it. They try to handle it themselves. And they get so embedded in the problem, they don't see their way, they don't see no way out. But they always give them a way of escape. Always give them a way of escape. He always fix a door for us when we in a problem for us to come out of it. Woo. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that comes, that comes, Brother Joseph, because we have a lot of Christian believers that do not have the knowledge of God. That's right. Yeah. They don't seek him often enough to realize that he's always there. Yeah. Yeah. Grace and peace, he said. I pray that grace and peace be, be multiplied. Because, because God, you gotta understand, God is in the adding and the multiplication business. He always adds to you. When you want God to do something for you, He do more than what you can ever imagine or think. Yeah, he does, man. Yeah, he does. Always. Do. Yeah. You so so when we pray, we sh we not only should pray to Him, but we should look forward to Him doing more than what I've asked Him to do. <coughs> Because he, he was, he's the God that can fix it every time. Amen. Right? So he says, verse 2 again, look at it, verse 2 again, look very close to it. 
He says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to put a pen in here and say it this way. When you know that you know that the grace of God and the peace of God is with you, through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, the Lord of, of God and Lord Jesus Christ, you can lay down and go to sleep at night. Amen. Amen. Because I know He's gonna work it out. Praise the Lord. You see, you might be in a heated argument right now, but you just back off of it. Let God have it. Amen. Amen. He has it every time. Amen. But we we got to take our hands off of it. A lot of times you hear me say, when you're trying to fix some things and that thing seems like that thing just won't fit, you got to back off and look at it from a different perspective. Amen. Give it to the Lord, Lord, you need it. You got it. I don't mess it up. <clears throat> Any question? Any question? And I'm moving pretty fast. That's a place I want to get to. I want you to look, notice what he says in verse 3. He's, he's saying in verse 3, and he starts out, he said, according as his divine power, look at what he said, have given unto us all things, <clears throat> not some things, but all things. Man, we need to have a house full of folks in here. Listen to this. I wish they would just like us on Facebook, just say, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <Amen. clears throat> because you see, when we came into this world that we're living in, when we accepted Christ Jesus as our personal Savior, He didn't leave us alone. Yeah. He didn't just snatch us out of darkness and bring us into His marvelous light and just leave us there. He, 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 he brought us in when He, when he called us, with a, when, he, when He pulled us with a cord of love. And, 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 and many of us, many believers think, when I, I shook the preacher's hand, no, yeah, that ain't it. So you still go to hell just shaking my hand. But you got to give him your heart. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? And, and then a lot of them feel as if, uh, uh, Brother Woods, they done something. But they, they ain't done nothing. It was him pulling them. Amen. Amen. You see? This grace that he had given us is his grace. The faith that we operate in is his faith. Because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah, man. Amen. Right? He give every man a measure of faith. A measure. And he says, in, in some of his teaching, Jesus' teaching said, if you have a faith of a, a, a mustard seed, Move you can say to that mountain, be ye moved. Amen. Amen. And if you ever see the mustard seed, and planted a mustard seed. He said that mustard seed, when it blossom up, right, it blossom up to a great bush. Even the birds can come and and and, and land on it. Yeah, amen. If we start out with just a small uh, uh, mustard seed of faith, and as we continue to grow, he add we add to our faith. He said, hey, go back to verse three. He said, according as his divine power. Not ours, as his divine power have given unto us all things pertaining unto life and godliness. Right? Again, it's coming through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. Yeah. Yeah. You see? <clears throat> Again, it's the, this, this knowing about it, pertaining and holding on to it, it comes from heaven knowledge of him that have called us <coughs> to glory and virtue. Amen. 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 It's important for us, every believer to the, the desire to have more knowledge. But they don't, but Christians don't desire to have more knowledge. They have more knowledge of worldly things than they do of Christian things. They have more knowledge. I, well, I know it's, e it's easy for them because we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. And, we're, and when we come to Christ, we were snatched out of the world. So some have spent a lifetime in the world and just a short time as a believer. 
So all they knew, all they know is the thing that's in the world. That's why it's so important for them to, to have the knowledge of God so that they can continue to grow. The more we know, the, uh, the more we know, the more our faith will increase. And the more our faith increase, the more life, the more we live according to the pleasing of God. Because he'll make things possible for us. Peter mentioned have called. Look, he said, him that have called. Right? Our salvational calling should bring us to glory and virtue. We should move. We should be growing to a place where we are, we are glorifying God in the way we move and the things that we do. The word glory suggests the radiance of God's being. We were, we were created in the image and likeness of God. Amen. Amen. Every human being was created in the image and likeness of God. We have a problem with color. But every human being, was, every human being was, was created in the image and the likeness of God. Amen. Mankind have a problem with color. Even in our own race, we have a, used to have a problem with dark complexion and light complexion. Color. But God has no problem with color. Amen? Amen. We've been called back. What we actually call it, he's calling us back to being just like him. Right? He called him back to our creative position with God. Because when man sinned in the garden, we were separated from his goodness. He still gave us grace. But we were separated. Sin separated because, because man sinned in the garden. Brought death upon humanity. That word virtue speaks of more excellence. Which means we should strive to possess that kind of virtue. Especially in how we live among unbelievers in the world. We should live, we should live, we should live a life knowing that the, the unbelieving world, they're watching us every day. That's what I said. Come on with it. First part of that verse. Which one? Three. According to? According to his divine power. Yes. Has given unto us all things. All things. Mm -hmm. That pertain unto life in God. We got everything we need. To have a beautiful life Amen. and have God in there. Yeah. And somebody say, well, I can't do it. They ain't looking at what God has given Amen, us. Bro. He gave us everything we need. Everybody. Ain't no excuse. No, 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 no excuse. Ain't no excuse. No, 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 no excuse. Man, we could. But we always want to. You, you well, you that. know, that, that human man yeah. coming there yeah. won't make yeah. excuses. Yeah. But God done fixed it. So we ain't got no excuse. No. We gonna live for God. We can live for God. Yeah. And if we don't live for Him, that's cause we don't want to. We don't want to. Yeah. He done made it that we can. Can't nothing stop us. Satan can't stop us. Yeah. Can't nothing stop us. Yeah. And you wonder how this person living. Yeah. And see, but, but then the, the the knowledge of that comes from the knowledge of God. God. Right. And He said, yeah. well, He said, yeah. call yeah. us to glory and virtue. That's what it's all about. Yeah. He wants us to be like his son, Jesus. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so he done yeah. gave us everything yeah. we need to be yeah. like Jesus. Yeah. 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 But we want to, we in the world, like you said, we ain't supposed to be other world, but a lot of times we blend right in with the world. <coughs> can't, tell the can't, can't tell a Christian. Some they call himself a Christian. Can't tell let, him. Let, let me show you what Peter said. Peter, Peter said to him yeah. when in the first chapter mm -hmm. of, of, of First Peter, yeah. uh, uh, chapter two, verse twelve. He says, "This is what he says to believers: having your conversation honest." That 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 is home. Yeah. Especially when you're around unbelievers or even believers, he said, "Have your conversation honest that, among Gentiles." That conversation covers your whole way you live. Amen. Ain't just your talking, it's the whole Amen. way you live your life. Yes. You know, Honest. if you live your life the way God wants you to live, a lot you ain't got to tell nobody now. Yeah, yeah. So they'll look at you. Yeah. And, and you know they'll come and ask you. They give you the respect. Yeah. 
They give you respect, yeah. do you? Amen. Because of your knowledge of God. Well, you know, there was a time when people would do that. Well, we done got into a world now where they don't care about They don't care. Them. You know, I used to yeah. hear a guy talking about, hit a preacher come. Yeah. Uh, put that away. Or don't do that. Don't let him see that. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But now, they offer the preacher, preacher, what they doing? Come on, preacher. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the preacher's son. Yeah. Let, let me finish this verse on out. He said, among the Gentiles, he, but as, whereas they speak against you as evildoers. And he, this is why he wants you to have your conversation honest among yeah. them. Because they, if they try to falsely accuse you or say evil things about you, he, your good works would speak for you. Your actions among unbelievers would speak for you. And you know, right? Uh, I think Jesus said, said they hated him and they gonna hate us. So mm -hmm. they hate us. Yeah. They see you trying to live your life according to, you know, don't do all the things they do. They gonna yeah. hate you yeah. because they hated you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we <laughs> need to expect that. But well, we, we have always live. have yeah. have that thing that we can tell them why I live. I live for Jesus. But you gotta live. So you gotta live the life. You gotta live. You gotta live the life. You can't live any other way. You yeah. can't say it. They ain't go get you a drink or something. Yeah. Get you a smoke. Yeah. yeah. No, you can't. You do gotta that. live that life. If you want to, if you want to, if, if you want to uh, move them towards what you believe, you can't indulge no, in what they're indulging. You, you have to separate yourself from them. Yeah. Right. He said, "Behold, the glorify God in the day of visitation." So, so this is an ongoing thing for you and I to live in front of the Gentile world or the unbelieving world. We have to live daily with that. We have to walk, right? We have to be honest around them. Definitely. We have to speak words and not lie, amen, so that when we stand before the master, he's going to say, well done. That's right. you, you live your life, right? You didn't deviate for, uh, from your walk of life. You didn't compromise who you are as a as a believer. You stood on your you stood on uh, uh, what you believe, Amen. And your faith continued to grow, yeah. Amen. And see that that's what I think we we, we kind of confuse the people of God when we preachers be feeling as if preachers are the only ones going to get a reward. But everyone who lives a life according to Jesus Christ, Amen, and try to live a life that is pleasing, they're going you going to get your reward. You, you always have an opportunity to do good to those who are who, who seeking for, for aid or help. Always have an opportunity to do good. Amen? No question there? Now, I, now, uh, I want to re elaborate on I, which one. I said something about uh, a while ago, I said something about that offer the preachers on. Huh? Yeah. But when I was at Pilgrim Rest, they told me this lady's going to have, they have another birthday party. I think I want to go. I said, well, I'll go down there and wish a happy birthday and stuff. When I got down there, they had beer. They asked me that I want a beer. I said, no, I don't want no beer. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I said, this is, I said, this ain't no Christian. Yeah. This ain't, this ain't what y'all supposed to do, but they will offer you stuff like that. They don't care. Nothing. I guess they was testing me. I don't know. Well, Satan, he well, God just, is Satan, Satan offered you to you. Yeah. He get one of his imps to, to move. Oh, yeah. Well, I, you know, but then I so realized. Something on you. I didn't know they were going to have no beer and stuff at the party. She told, they told me it was a birthday party. Yeah. Well, well we've been to some weddings for <laughs> We've been to some weddings and what they do after the wedding. They oh, have yeah. champagne and beer, but we don't indulge. Oh, yeah. They'll have a thing up there with the wine yeah. in it. Something to wait and like that. Let's let's go on, let's go on to verse four. You all right, Chief? What's the one? Look at verse four. He said, "Whereby," and he's continuing his thought right from verses one. He's continuing his thought about the divine uh, power that's been given to us, and he's continuing. He said, "Whereby are given unto us again." You see, the word "given" shows up here in the fourth fourth verse. Whereby are given to us exceeding exceeding great and precious promise that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Right. Right. 
the, the import, not, not we escape in we our lust and we escape, no, we escape the lust that's in the world. Right? And, and what he's trying to do, the exceeding, that word exceeding draws our attention to the degree and the intensity of God's precious promise. Every promise that God makes to us is exceedingly great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Bible says promises is yes and amen. And, and many believers don't know the promises of God. They have never been in the researches of, of all the promises that have been made to God. Some promises that God has made are, are conditional. Some promises that are unconditional. Right. We should know the promises that God has made to us. Right? It's like having a blank check yeah, right. that draws from heaven back, signed by the Lord Jesus' blood. And this, he says, is given to us. Exceeding great, precious promise. Promise never to leave you. Promise never to forsake you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> when, when, when you see, when you see, when we came into God's plan of salvation, we came without any knowledge of how to be a kingdom people. We didn't have no knowledge of how to be kingdom. So God gave us what we needed to live. And now we we'll live our life in Jesus, and we must allow the Holy Spirit, which is a promise, the precious promise, to help us navigate our life supernaturally. John, I want I asked my brother here to read uh, St. John chapter 16, verse 7 to 13. I didn't give you that one, Sheila, but as he read it. Uh, St. John chapter 16, verse chapter 7. 7, verse 7. Notice what it says. It's expedient that I go away. Go ahead. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Mm -hmm. For if I go not away, mm -hmm. the comforter will not come unto you. Mm -hmm. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Hold up, hold up. The, who is the comforter? Holy the Spirit. Holy the Spirit. That's the precious promise. He was telling his disciples. This is what he told his disciples. They was, they was all distraught because he was going away. That's when we got that verse in John 14 and 1 where he said, Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house is many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. Amen. All right? That's what, that's what we're going. He's going up because verse chapter 14, we're well, starting in verse 13. Chapter 14, 15, and 16, he's still comforting his disciples. Mm -hmm. And when he gets to chapter 16, he says, he says, the expedient that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit, which is housed inside of us, yeah. he won't come. Yeah. The reason why he won't come, because while Jesus was on earth in his three year, three and a half year ministry, Jesus was in on the earth. But when he, when he died and rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit came. Amen. On the day after Pentecost, <laughs> the Holy Spirit came in like a dove. Yeah. The, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is now in operation in the earth. And it's operation inside of us now. Go ahead. Okay, verse 8. <clears throat> and when he has come, he will provide the world of sin mm -hmm. and the righteousness and of justice. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Go ahead. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness? Go ahead. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no, no more. more. Don't say He's, it's, his, The Holy Spirit is going to uh, reveal to them their sin. And their unrighteousness. You understand what I'm saying? He also revealed to us, inside of us, uh -huh. as complicated as it may be, because we don't have the spiritual growth, as complicated it may seem, the, the, the reason you have these, you feel uncomfortable when you do some things, and you know you done done something wrong, that's the Spirit of God convicting you, sharing with you the things that you've done wrong. Woo, yes, sir. Amen. And it, it shouldn't be a time for a believer. I, I hope you listen to me, Facebook friend. Shouldn't be a time you can say some things to somebody and it not bother you if you say you're yeah. a believer. Man. 
Yeah. Verse, yes. verse 8 again. Verse 8. <clears throat> and when he is come, he will provide the world of sin mm -hmm. and of righteousness. Reprove. And that word judge. That word is, is not. That word is reprove. Yeah. Come on. He, he will reprove the world of sin. Go ahead. Verse 9. Verse 8. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and, and of judgment. And judgment. And judgment. He's the one. You see. Through through the message that the preachers preach, to the to the teaching that teachers teach, through the through the reading of God's word, because you read God's word, there are times when God's word himself convicts you. Amen. If you put yourself in the word, but if you if you read in God's word and you just deflecting it on somebody else and not putting yourself in the middle of the word, then it won't it won't bother you. But if you read in it and putting yourself in the middle of the word, it'll convict you. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Uh, verse nine. And verse ten. Verse ten. Of righteousness, because I go to my father. And ye see me no more. Mm -hmm. Of judgment? Of judgment because the prince, prince of this world is judged. Is judged. He's already judged. He's, he's the prince of this world. The prince of this world is Satan. Right. Yeah. The prince of this world is Satan. Sure is. The, the things that are happening today he's, is because of, of Satan. It is part, really because of sin. Yep. Sin is causing havoc in the world. Mm -hmm. But he said the prince of the world is already judged. He's, his timeline is really coming to an end. Verse 11. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Mm -hmm. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Okay, 13, and that's the last one. I'll be it. I'll be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all oh, truth. truth. That's For right. he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. That's the Holy Spirit. Man. That's the precious promise. The precious promise that he have, have given to us. Amen. The pressure on this. This is this is why it's so uh, important for us to understand all the things that God has provided for us to live the Christian life. Amen. 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 Now, now, I want you to I want you to see I want you to notice what Paul what Paul said how he escaped the corruption of sin. The corruption through the, the how he was able to abstain from the lust of the world in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Notice what he says. This is Paul testament, testament here. <laughs> it's, it's right there on the fast screen. He says, I am crucified. Not Christ Jesus. He says, I am crucified. With who? Christ. With Christ. You see, you can't crucify yourself. Somebody else has to crucify you. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Then he have this nevertheless, this nevertheless pause in what he says. He, he said, but nevertheless, he's not giving up. Nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified with Christ, but nevertheless, I'm still living. I've been through some challenges in my life. You know, I, I almost, he was almost left dead. He said, but I live. <clears throat> Notice how he said it. Notice what he said. Yet not I. In other words, he said, I'm not just living because I, I'm living that someone else helping me to live. Yeah. He said, yet not I, but Christ live well. And the person of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is living in us. He can't.
came to that realization, we should come to that same realization. Every time you get up, it's the Spirit of God waking you up in the morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God laying you down late at night. Amen. The Spirit of God helps you help navigate your life through this chaotic world you live in. Amen. The Holy Amen. Spirit. The knowledge you have obtained being on the job, the Holy Spirit helping you. What promotion that you get, the Holy Spirit helping you. Amen. Everything, everything that that's good that happened to us. It's, it's, the, it's the Jesus Christ is through the Holy Spirit helping us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said, not I, yet not I, but Christ live in me. Now, notice the final verse. He said, and, and the life which I live now, now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by faith. the faith Amen. of the Son of God. Amen. He knows this. You got to know this. Who love me? Praise you gotta know Lord. that, man. You gotta know that. Okay. You don't have to. You don't have to say. You know, like, 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 girlfriend and boyfriend. <coughs> we do. We check in. Do you love me? Yeah. You know. Yeah, I love you. We don't have to keep checking in and asking him that. He know he loves you. Right. You gotta know that he loves you. And, and not only do you know that he loves you. But you got to know that he's there to help you. Amen. Whatever situation you're in. You can tell him some things. You ain't got to worry about him going out telling nobody about your problem. Amen. Amen. Look what he did for us. Yeah. To die for us like he did. Yeah. Man. It was horrible, wasn't it? Woo. It was horrible. Man. But he, he done it for us. For yes. you and for me. Yes, sir. For, the, yeah, for everyone who will... Uh, uh, step out on faith and believe. Yeah. Yes, who loved me and what he says, and, and, you're right, Joe, he said, and gave himself for me. Right. So you see, Man. and that's what keeps him, that's what kept him on the road. That's what kept him striving, uh, yeah. planting churches everywhere he goes. Whether he was Silas or Barnabas, it didn't matter. He, I mean, always, it always mattered to have a companion that's when right, you're right. out, you know, Vandalizing, uh, 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 yeah. Have your companion or somebody because he sent his disciples out two by two. Love. Amen. Love for love. But he understood who loved. He understood he was loved. He understood that Christ gave his life. He understood that. You see, and that was that give that should give you strength. That's supposed yes, to keep sir. us. Yeah. yeah. That keep us going. Yeah. 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 Knowing that he loved. Yeah. 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 From verses five to verses six, verses five, six, and seven, he, he he gives us key to add to our faith. That's right. Because the, the subject tonight is added to our faith. In verse five, he says, in verse five, he said, and besides this, not only to give us the present promise, he said, and besides this, yeah. giving all diligence to add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge. We're not gonna leave you out. He, right? he, he's, what he's saying, Brother Joe, he said, your knowledge of him and yeah. the precious promise that he gave to you, he said, besides this, he's still doing things for you. Amen. 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 And what he wants us to do, he wants us to continue to grow. Because the more we grow, the more we know. Amen. Right? Amen. He said, faith does not, <clears throat> listen, your faith, Joe, don't stand by itself. No. It's not isolated. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Oh man. Woo. Well, we have, and, and he says, you have to have virtue alongside of faith. Man. Virtue helps us verbalize, right? The knowledge that we have of Jesus Christ. Help us to share <coughs> with others who we're dependent on. And, and, and we have to do this. We, Sister Bullard and I have to start doing this at home. When 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 the Marcus go to the refrigerator yeah. and look in the refrigerator, he don't and he look. He said, "The Lord has provided." We gotta start letting him know who's providing the thing for him. Amen. Amen. And we need to start doing that, Sister Bullard, soon because this boy yeah. think money just growing trees. Yeah. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? Talk about this yeah. So to help us verbalize. Amen. To, to others about who who God what God is doing for us. Amen. 
The word virtue again means more excellence. We're moving, we're moving <clears throat> from, from faith to <laughs> adding virtue. And from virtue, we add in knowledge. Yeah. He said, the word diligent means we got to continue to earnestly desire to move from just having faith as a grain of muscle seed right. to, to a place where we desire to have the virtue. And from virtue, we got to desire to have knowledge. Oh. Knowledge requires learning. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And not only learning, but putting those, what we learn into practice. Uh -huh. All right. Because mm -hmm. once you learn how to change the tire, once you learn how to change the automobile tire, you know how to change the tire. When you learn it, when you learn how to do certain things and you know how to do it, can't yeah. nobody take what you know from you. Woo. Amen. They may stop you from doing, working yeah. or doing what you yeah. know to do, yeah. but they can't take what you know. Yeah. Wow. I don't yeah. care how the enemy attack you, he can't take what you know. That's right. Yeah. Can't take that. Knowledge is span our mental horizon and also protect us from false teachers. False teachers come to distract us from the truth. And we just see, a Brother Woods had read that the, the Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Truth. Mm -hmm. Spirit of truth. He is there to lead us into all truths. And so in other words, when false teachers appear and be trying to share some things with us, the Holy Spirit just says, oh, I ain't right. I need to get away from that. So we have to obtain the not. <clears throat> that is necessary for godly life. So we must have some self-control. You gotta always have some self-control, right? For this knowledge that we have been given to us by God. Let's go to verse six. We're still adding, he said adding to knowledge. Add to knowledge, we, we, that, that means we have to learn, right? Yeah. From knowledge temperance. That's a tough one right there. That means self-control. Right. Self-control. Knowledge without self-control can be deadly. Because sometimes you can make people feel real small. You hurt people's feelings because you, you got all that knowledge and make them feel like they don't know nothing. It can be deadly. Without, uh, without control, Without control, self-control, knowledge can be uh, have a tendency to brag, and you continue to boast about what you know. And also, come on with it. Knowledge, knowledge can make you God a fool too. Knowledge can make you act a fool. A fool, a plum fool. <laughs> uh, you gonna step on that one? Uh, yeah. It's it's yeah. Well, it's you're right. Knowledge, your knowledge can you know make you act. <laughs> Yeah. You got some people like this. From, from having, from, from knowledge, he said, from knowledge, temperance, having self control, and from temperance, patience. Patience. Good. Yeah, yeah. Patience here yeah. means to have, again, have some self control. You got to have, have waiting power. You got to be able to wait on the Lord. That's right, bro. You got to be able to just stand still and wait on the salvation of the Lord. You know, that temperance, yep. when you add that temperance to knowledge, they mm -hmm. keep you from acting like a <laughs> Joseph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, everybody don't know. Some people know and some people don't. And That's you got to, you know, you have to stay on their level sometimes. Don't try to get above nobody. Yeah. But if you yeah. got knowledge, you have temperance with it, it'll, yeah. it'll make you love, it'll make yeah. you do right. Help you share, it'll help you to share the knowledge yeah. in, in a way that is not. You, know, and you don't overload a donkey by trying to give them so much. <laughs> yeah. They <laughs> <can't handle. laughs> And patience. <clears throat> now that's a thing right there. We gotta know how to wait. Yeah. Have to know how to wait. Temperance, patience. When the people learn how to how to have patience and wait down, like I said, yeah. I'm still in that school. Me too. I'm well, still in the school of patience. patience. <clears throat> This life that we living for God is a never ending yeah, learning yeah. thing. You always learn. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of times we learn by the mistakes yeah. we make. Yeah. I'm also I'm often called that. I'm often called out about that at home. <laughs> you ain't got no patience with me. <laughs> I'm 
I'm still I'm still in the schoolhouse working Amen. on that. Amen. Still working on that. Amen. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think we all still work on that. From from patience, Peter adds godliness. Yeah. Godliness carries the thought of being devout. Devout. Which means we are striving to live a godly life. And the more temperance, knowledge, and patience we add to our faith, the more <laughs> godlike we will act. Yeah. Even in our marriage, Hallelujah. even in our relationship with others, even on our job, right. we act more godlike. It ain't about me. Yeah. It's about putting God. <clears throat> yeah. Then from, from then verse we go from verse six we go to verse seven. <clears throat> Peter said, <clears throat> "From godliness we must add brotherly kindness." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means that means uh, 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 that we kind showing good towards others, right? right? Yeah. But it must be done with love, yeah. right? And, and if it's not done with love. Then you know, we just doing it just to be doing it and not out of love. Then it don't mean nothing. Sure what we do for the Lord, if it ain't from our heart, don't mean nothing. Right. Brotherly kindness. <laughs> Amen. Brotherly. And then they have that last word from kindness, we move to charity. Right. That word charity means love. That's right. We already given, we've been given a command from, from Jesus that gave to his disciples. Right? He says, he tells them, he said, love one another as I have loved you. That's it. And, they, they, and they wanted to know, they wanted to know what commandments, they, they really want to know what commandments can we keep. And they was challenging Jesus to the point where they, they feel as if, if Jesus can tell me what I need to keep, and what I need, what I don't have to keep, maybe I can make it into heaven. And so Jesus just what he done, he just condensed it all down. He said, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Right? Did he did he add to it? He said, did he add that he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself? Right? It's all about love. Right. He he condensed it all. So that they, they couldn't escape it. And one of the things he said when you study that, if you love God, then you won't be doing You won't hate your brother. If you love God, you won't go out stealing. If you love God, you won't go out love. You won't go out lying. <coughs> because it, the Bible said if you, if you break one, you don't broke all of the commandments. Right. You see? So he, and he helped the brothers. And he helping us today. He, he just condensed it all. Well, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> a little itty bitty. But you know, when I come set my house on fire, mm. I hate to wait for you. You want some water? I got some water right here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think I got enough. Go ahead. Okay. 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 My baby son set my house on fire. Hey, God, forgive him. But you know what I tell you? He probably forgave him. But you know what I tell you? If God called him home, you know what I say? <coughs> I would not go to the stone. I would not go to the stone. Then you haven't forgiven him. Sure. You, have, you, have not, you really have not forgiven him. You can't say, I forgive him. You can't say, Lord, I forgive him and not really forgive him. This is what scripture says. Can I give you scripture? He said, unless you forgive from your heart, not from your lips. Yeah. Because God knows your lips. You just said it. You won't go to the front, you won't do this, you won't do that. It's been years since he's done that. Yeah. And you're still harboring that, that what he's done in your heart. I know you can't forgive it. Forgive it. It's hard for you to forget what he's done, but you've got to get past it. This is what you have to, you have to pray to God. Lord, help me to get past Amen. this. Because he's still your son. That's right. You follow what I'm saying? So, so yeah, if, if your son died, I'll look on if your son died, they calling you. Mm. And, and they gonna send that bill to you. Yeah. Whether you whether you go down there or not, they send that bill to you because he's your son. If you ain't married, they send it to you. 
And you have to make a decision. So the, today, yeah. the Lord had you to ask that question, and then God give you the Spirit of God give you an answer, and you pray to God so you get past it. Because yeah. yeah. <clears throat> because when the day is done, He's still your son, and you 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 have confessed hope in Jesus Christ. And the, and the word of God says, unless you forgive from your heart, God will not forgive you. That's scripture. That's called Amen. 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 Let's, let me finish up because I'm close, I'm closing out. Amen. Any question on that? We know it's love. All right. Verse 8 says, which implies that all these things mentioned must be a part of added to our faith. Verse 8 says, for if these things, know the way it said, but let's do it very carefully. For if these things, if it's a conditional cause, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. Where? In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You continue after your faith. You, you won't be barren. You'll be fruitful. You won't be unfruitful in the knowledge. Because that that knowledge that you're seeking is go it's gonna produce some things in you. It's gonna produce some things in you. You're gonna continue to grow. You're gonna be able to handle those little things that come in your life more strongly than you ever had before. Because you your faith, you add those things to your faith. Verse 9. Verse 9 said, but he that lacks these things, he that lacks adding those things to your faith, he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see or fall. Right? In other words, your perception, your perception of things to come, you won't be able to see it. It's the things that are going to happen, it's going to hit you right in the face and you won't even know it's coming. Woo. But when you're in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will warn you some things, the things to come. You won't be blind. You see, we were blind in the world. Amen. But he opened our eyes so that we may see. Because we was lost. What? He says, have forgotten. He said, also added to that, he said, and also not blind, you couldn't see, but have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Yeah. And that's a person walking around still Still thinking they lost you. In order for us to forgive other people, we got to remember that God he gave us. Amen. 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 Yeah. If they just stop to think in terms of what you that's just what, said. That's what it's all about. You know, when he said, love God the Father with all your heart and soul, yeah. if you love him, you'll try to keep his commandments and do what he wants mm -hmm. you to do. Mm -hmm. But if you can't forgive and you can't forget, yeah. You don't forgot what God did for, for God. you when he hung on the cross. Spare in the edge of faith and grow. Purged our sins and gave us a way not to go to hell. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Short sighted. Can't see a fall. We ought to always keep that in our mind. <laughs> Cause the believer to forget that he and she have been purged from sin. They forget that he said saved them and purged them from the sin. Which means the believer have failed when they fail to add to their faith, amen, the grace, they still like babes. Acting still acting foolish. Yeah. And, and, but in the case, in the in, in, but in this case, the bottom line is that he in, in, in Romans 6 11 said we should reckon ourselves to be dead and indeed to sin. But if you can't reckon yourself to be dead to sin, the same sin that you once indulged yourself in is still going to be a part of your life. In other words, you can't even get you can't even get away from the things that you used to do because it's still bothering you. It's still a part of your life. And you, you don't forget that he don't he don't gave you your sin. Amen. 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 And then ten, I close out in ten because we have to leave. He said, wherefore, wherefore, he kind of talks and all, and it's still connected to all the all the verses. He said, wherefore, wherefore, therefore, always look therefore back at the preceding verses. He said, but, but wherefore, the rabble, brother. And then he tells him, diligent, earnestly, to make your call and election sure. Right? And, and he's not talking in terms of 
We, we looked at that election, sure, and preachers want to put themselves in that position. Now, he's, your election, sure, your calling. You were elect. You, you were called. You were chosen. You see? You were chosen before the foundation of the world. I, I think Brother, Brother Deacon, Deacon Kevin is still working on you. You chose for the foundation of the world, meaning that you were already in the book of life. Right. But, and say, so say, if you do these things, you should never what? Oh. And that's very important because a lot of times when we do, we, we think we're failing, we think we're failing God, but we, in our mindset, you're not because you have the knowledge of God. Even, even if you feel yourself as if you're all alone in everything that you do, you're not alone. You're not alone. Prayer can, prayer can do some things that you that you can't do when you're honest, honest with God. When you're in the right standing with God and you've doing, been doing the right thing, you can send up a prayer and he can change the heart. He, he can change the direction of a person. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what he 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 done that for. Uh, I think he done that for uh, Joseph. Well, not Joseph, but but Joshua. Yeah. Not only did he done it for Joseph, but he done it for Jacob. Mm -hmm. Jacob thought Esau was going to kill him. Mm -hmm. No, he's going to kill him. Sent all kind of things over there to try to bribe him. He separated, he separated his wife. He put, he put his, the wife that he loved the most, he put her way in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Put Leah up front. Yeah. Hoping, hoping that Esau would, yeah. when Esau come over there, it wouldn't, would bother him. But God had changed Esau's heart. Yeah. <clears throat> Prayer can change the heart of a person. Amen. Amen. But you gotta be, you gotta be sincere. Yeah. And when you pray for God. Uh, oh, let, let's close. Because Sunday is Father's Day, we pray that you come out Sunday. We got a, a great message for not only the Father, but for those that are in, in, in going to be in the house. Wear white if your father passed. Red if your father is still living. Pray for your fathers. We know fathers ain't all been all the greatest of things, but God sees them differently than how we see them. Amen. 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 Not only that, but we got a men's day come on the fourth Sunday. We got William Esther. <coughs> Going to be our keynote speaker. And then on the fifth Sunday, we got a, a gospel extravaganza. Amen. Amen. We got a lot of gospel artists going to be right here at 3 o'clock on the now, fifth so Sunday. So we practice the Thursday. Thursday? This Saturday, we practice at 2 o'clock. Okay. Miracle of practice at 2 o'clock. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for the message tonight, for the teaching elements that you have provided for us tonight. I pray as we leave, we know that we got to continue to add things to our faith so that we can walk in the pleasing of you, baby. The things that we do, the conversation that we have, yes, not only the conversation that we have, but the, as, as the light that we live you, can shine brighter because you have you have commanded us to let our light so shine that men and women, boys and girls, can see you working in us, that you can get the glory for the way that we live. Lord, we pray for all of our sick and shut in. We pray that you would touch their bodies. Those yes, are in pain tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them. Let's <coughs> ease the pain. We love you. We thank you for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.